area of a rhombus. All right, so in this topic, we're going to find the area of a rhombus. So what is a rhombus? A rhombus is a parallelogram with all congruent sides. So a special rhombus is a square. So a square is a rhombus that has four 90-degree angles. Um, but a rhombus doesn't have to be a square. It can just be kind of more of a diamond-type shape here. Um, so if we want to find the area of a rhombus, um, then we need to know a couple things about them. So the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular, and they bisect each other. So bisect each other means that they cut each other in half like this. So for this diagonal, this point here cuts it in half, and then the same thing happens with the other diagonal. These diagonals are also perpendicular, which means they're, they're 90s all in the middle here. So a 90 degree angle, sorry. Um, also find the area... So we'll find the area of the rhombus by adding the area of the two triangles together. So down here they make the, they say a red triangle and a blue triangle. So first they find the area of the red triangle, which is on the bottom, and then they find the area of the, the blue triangle, which is on the top. And they add these two together. Um, you can also use the diagonals if that's what you're given. So you can use the, the formula um, below here, which is one half diagonal one times diagonal two, and that simply gives you the formula as well. Uh, let's see, do I have my, I wanted to see if I have my whiteboard open. I do, perfect. Why is it? That's not what I want to do, I wanted to minimize the screen. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my whiteboard here. I'm gonna write down that formula for us so that it's a little easier to use instead of using my pen tool here. Okay, so over here I'm going to write um, area equals one half diagonal one times diagonal two. So this is an option for the area of a rhombus. And we can also, like I said, um, up here we can do Triangle one, um, the area, and then triangle two, and then add those two triangles together. So it just depends on how we want to do this. So let's go ahead and actually try this out. Mm, come on, come on, you're quit arguing with me. I thought I turned the pen tool off. There we go. I did not clear that out. Okay, now the pen tool is off. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and look over here. So first, I do actually want to turn the pen tool on really quick so I can mark these because it's a little easier to see them marked. So WV is 6 and XV is 7. Find the area of the rhombus. So remember, the diagonals of rhombus bisect each other. So this point cuts both diagonals in half. So I, if I know this half is 6, if I keep going... This half is six. It's happening. So seven, and this half will also be seven. So remember, we can um, use this formula here, and we can say the area equals one half diagonal one. Remember, we have to add the two together, so we get seven plus seven is 14, and then six plus six is 12 for diagonal two. And then we're just going to multiply these together. So let's see, we get one half times, and I'm just gonna write this off to the side here. So we get eight, two, four, one, eight, six, one. Sorry, yeah, eight, six, one. I did say that right. And then we're gonna multiply by one half. That's the exact same thing as saying I'm going to divide by two, like this. So I end up with 8, because that goes in evenly, and 4. So we get 84. All right, so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to type in 84. Now I need to make sure I choose my unit, um, because these were centimeters, areas squared. And the reason for that is because both 14 and 12 had centimeters on them. I didn't include them here. But centimeters times centimeters means that when we're, we're done here and we get this 84, 
we have centimeters times centimeters and we just write that as centimeters squared. All right, so let's go ahead and check. Perfect, clear, next. Okay, so let's mark this one. So we have PR, so this whole thing is 28 and QT is 10. So remember if this is the midpoint, this is the point where they bisect. So if I know this half is 10, if I keep going, the other half is also 10. All right, so if we're using that same formula over here, we have one half times diagonal one. We already know one of them is 28, and the other one is 10 and 10, which is 20. So area equals one half times, let's see, I'm gonna write this out over here, 28 and 20, zero, zero, we get 16, four and five. So we get 560. And then remember, we want to divide by 2. So 2 can go into 5 twice. And 16, it can go in 8 times. We get 0 here, but remember, I haven't filled this last spot in, so I need to put a 0 on the end here. So I'm going to have area equals 280. This is an equal sign. Sorry, that came out a little ugly. And these were meters, even though I didn't include them here. So remember, we have meters times meters. So at the end, I put meters squared. All right, so we get 280 meters squared. Check. Perfect. Next. One more of these. Okay, so we have EG. And I'm exclusively using this diagonal method instead of the two triangles. To me, it's just it's a little easier if they give you the diagonals. There's no reason to not use this method necessarily. Um, it just makes it a little easier. So in this one, they actually just gave us the two diagonals. So I know I'm gonna have area equals one half 30 times 18. So I'm gonna go 30 times 18, and I haven't cleared all this out yet. So I get 24, zero, and three. So I get 450. And then remember, I want to divide it by 2. So 450 divided by 2 goes in twice for 4 and goes in 7 times for 14. Remember to fill this 0 spot in. Um, so that was kind of a little bit of, I was running out of room here, so I did a little bit everywhere. Sorry about that. So we have 20, 270. And these were millimeters, so I want to click millimeters squared. Check. All right, we finished another one. Yay.